Hundreds of students come to school every day ready to learn. But what if the students didn't show up? This is an issue that many students face and it's called truancy. For this episode, we talked to multiple individuals about how truancy affects Shawnee County schools and how it also affects our district. We spoke to the school officials, the district attorney, a student who has struggled with truancy, and our attendance secretary, Deanna Brady. Well, how it starts is, you know, a person stops showing up for school or their parent starts calling them in. Once you get, once you have eight absences in a semester, then every absence after that has to have a doctor's note for it to be excused. So you, if you start having, not having the doctor's notes, then you start being unexcused. And when you have three days of unexcused, then you get a warning letter to your parent. You know, you're on the edge of being truant, start coming to school, basically then if they still do not come to school then the paperwork is filed with the DA and then they choose whether or not they take the case. In fact, truancy is a rising epidemic and stats from the U.S. Department of Education show that about one in seven students are chronically absent. We, uh, in every school there's, there is a problem with truancy um, because if one, one student is truant it's a problem and we want everyone to be successful. But um, at our school here we probably have about one percent we start at a young age with these kids are kindergartners and all the way through their, their elementary years and this is the expectation and this is, this is what ha you know, has to happen. There's no other options and then when they get to high school ages then it's not near as uh, problematic. If we have a student that stops coming to school, no, do of that. course we um, contact the parent. Parent tries to work with the counselors, counselors and parents try to work with the uh, assistant principals so that the ultimate goal is to, to get the kids back to school. We want you to graduate. That's our ultimate goal. We don't want to punish you for not being here. We want to get you here. For some kids, it probably does. For others, it doesn't. Um, many times, the, the, the um, circumstances surrounding a truancy, the individual the kinds of things that kids are dealing with in their lives and that the parents are having to deal with in their lives um, are so overwhelming that intervention by the court system really doesn't make a difference. Um, so, you know, whenever possible, we try to exhaust all the avenues that we have available to us here first, which includes social workers, which includes counselors, which includes um, social workers making home visits if we need to do that. Um, working with parents to try to put plans in place to get kids to school. Okay, first thing they did was they call you into the office and they're like, hey, why are you skipping so much? And then you just tell them like, I'm not skipping. And they're like, stop lying. And then you continue, if you keep skipping a lot, then they start like saying, oh, you're gonna go to court if you keep skipping. And then if you keep skipping, they send you a letter in the mail of your court date, and then you gotta go to court. The DA's office used to be a lot more receptive of our truancy cases that we would file and it would actually do a lot more than what they do now. Um, I would say probably the last 10 we've filed have been declined. We receive uh, a much higher number of what we would, we would call intakes or referrals, uh, cases that are sent to us uh, for children that meet this criteria, but ultimately uh, the number of cases that we file, uh, the number of truancy cases we file a year probably ranges between three and 500. Uh, but what we find is oftentimes when you have a child who's truant, that child has issues going on in the home. Uh, maybe they're not getting the care they need at home. Uh, maybe there's abuse in the home, uh, things like that. Maybe their parents don't know that they're skipping school. And so this can be an early warning system uh, to avoid some of those and, and hopefully uh, get some support in place. There was a time uh, just a few years ago, four, five, six years ago, when we really got uh, a lot of resolve. When we'd file a student as truant, um, they would have to uh, appear before the judge, usually Judge Johnson, who was, who was very thorough um, on truancy and very um, a, a, good, a good advocate for the schools. The last truant uh, case we had that actually went to court, the judge physically, first of all, he took her cell phone. She tried to take the chip out of the back. He said, oh no, I want that too. Took her cell phone, put her on house arrest. Um, the next time we went for the same kid, he actually removed her from her home because her parents would not make her come to school. Well, the case itself, the truancy case that we would file is a child in need of care case. Uh, strictly speaking, 
uh, what that means is the court now has jurisdiction and authority to, uh, to employ orders uh, regarding the behavior of the child. Uh, the parents will have to come to court. They'll have to explain what's going on with their child, why hasn't their child been there. Uh, and that can certainly lead to other, uh, other things that we find out about what's going on with the kid. I think Judge Johnson was, was very good at addressing issues of truancy um, and uh, really held uh, families accountable to, to make sure that the kids were in school because um, we had several kids that returned fairly regularly after being in Judge Johnson's court. Um, so that always helps when you have a supportive um, court working with you. He was rude. He was just very mean. He put you in this one chair to isolate you and make you feel like you just like didn't have anything really. Like your mom or parent or anyone had to be on the side. No one could be around you. Just in this little chair and talk to him. And he'd be like real aggressive in his voice. It was a no-nonsense approach. Absolutely, we got um, we we uh, kids didn't show up to school. We got a hold of the parents, found out why, you know, and um, and held the parents accountable for kids, you know, that were that were minors. It's you guys' responsibility to come to school. I mean, that's your job. Just do it and don't make your parents force that hand. But sometimes, and there's always some extenuating circumstances. Not every case is the same. Uh, I would not just look at how many times have they been absent, but how are they doing in school? Uh, what kind of grades are they getting? Uh, because, you know, maybe, maybe the kid was sick uh, a lot that year, um, but they do really well in school. That's less of a concern. Uh, look at their disciplinary reports. Are they getting written up every day? Are they getting in trouble? Are they getting into fights or things like that in school? Uh, you have to look at the total picture, not just the absolute black and white of how many times has somebody missed and how many times has it been unexcused. Although it is concerning because presumably uh, if someone is missing school and their parents know about it, they should be able to get an excuse for that, right? There should be a valid reason. So these are, I mean, there's no you know, black and white litmus test for it. You kind of look at the totality of the circumstances that apply. Uh, so in a nutshell, uh, how are they doing at school and uh, how are they getting along with everybody? Um, I know there's been, you know, some years that uh, sometimes we hear that students are getting court dates a little bit faster. Sometimes it seems like it takes a little bit longer, but sometimes it is just year to year. Uh, I, I do know that, you know, we also try really hard uh, to make sure that we're following through too, you know, because like I said, we know that they have a lot of cases. It's not just our districts. And so we do try to reach out to them and, uh, and get updated on that situation. Um, but like I said, I, I do know they're overwhelmed, you know, having said that. And so I think that's why we try really hard here uh, to do whatever we can to work with students and their families. Um, because honestly, uh, you know, it's one thing if a student does get a court date and they're being told they have to come, you know, by a judge, but it's another if we can find ways to actually get a kid to feel more connected to school and that they want to come and they're just not being forced to. So while going the truancy route obviously, you know, can help uh, us get kids here, uh, we're still going to continue regardless of what's going on with that office, you know, to get kids to try to, you know, come to school regularly. I think it would definitely help if we could get, um, you know, more push from that office, absolutely. Right, right. From my understanding, though, no, because um, uh, when I came to this position, like like I said, this is my first doing it. Um, from my understanding is that since last year, the lady who was doing truancy here, she was um, not doing it correctly on time. So uh, by this summer came around, this year came around, there was still, the district attorney was still working on truancy packets from last school year. Uh, just because that lady who was doing it before me, she was taking quite a while to uh, fill out all the paperwork. Well, I think it's, it's about that discretion that we have, right? Um, like I said, just because we get a referral doesn't mean it's gonna be an automatic filing. It would be a disservice, I think, to, uh, to the families and to the students involved if every time somebody met that minimum threshold, we filed a child need of care case because now the state is involved, right? Now uh, the court has jurisdiction over your child uh, and for what reason? You know, a lot of families, um, uh, a lot of parents and a lot of children, uh, you know, may go through a difficult time. Maybe there's a death in the family, maybe uh, there's a serious illness for one of the parents and, and that's sometimes how these things happen. Uh, and so a child will have some absences and somebody forgot to call the school, things like that. And so, you know, they're doing, otherwise they're doing well in school, uh, they're getting along with everybody. It doesn't seem prudent or reasonable at that point to uh, intervene on behalf of the state. 
I think a lot of times parents simply just don't think it's a priority. They're not overly concerned and that's why the notice is important. And when they get the notice, they become overly concerned. Oh no, <laughs> my mom was pissed every time. <laughs> she was like, stop doing this, just hurry up and graduate. And I was like, all right, and I skipped. Truancy is an issue that doesn't seem to be going away anytime soon. But what schools need are engaging classes for students to get here. And when that doesn't work, they need something effective to fall back on. We all want kids to go to school, get an education, take advantage of those opportunities.